Um, so it gives me great pleasure to invite Professor Sally Varnum to present the next uh, session titled Student Voice to Partnership in Aotearoa, New Zealand, Fidi Angavau and Onwards. And I do uh, apologize if I have mispronounced that title. Sally has recently retired from the University of Technology, Sydney, where she is uh, the, she was the professor of law, chair of the university academic board, and a member of the UTS Council. Her recent research concentrates on the role of student voice in tertiary institution decision making and governance. A national senior teaching fellow, she published Creating a Framework for Student Partnership in University Decision Making and Governance, and similar papers for the Student Voice Australia. So Sally will be facilitating the session. So without further ado, welcome and thank you, Sally, for joining us. Thank you so much, Carmen and, and Phil. Um, it's great to be here. First of all, I'd like to offer my congratulations to Phil and her team for carrying Student Voice Australia forward so well, despite all the um, all the setbacks with COVID and whatever. It's, been, it's great to see it in such good heart. Um, I'd also like to offer our, our huge thanks to Phil, Rebecca, Piper, Chantel and Kate for organising this symposium and for having us. Um, I don't intend to do too much talking because it is all about the students and I have, um, I will introduce you in a minute to the students who are here with me. Um, but we will just go through, I'm not going to read the PowerPoints. Um, I'm just going to go through them and really leave it to the students to do most of the talking, I hope. <laughs> I'm sure they will, they're great. Um, so, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, the students, the people I have here with me are, uh, first of all, Alice Manda, who is the president of the National Disabled Students Association. Alice um, has, is the founder of that association and it has done a fantastic job in getting it all together and up and running. Secondly, Andrew Lascelles, who's the president of the, he's on a Zoom at another location, he's in Auckland. Um, Andrew is the, the, this, the current president of the New Zealand Union of Students Associations and he comes from the, um, the sector which is now called Te, Tupukinga. Um, which is part of the polytechnic system. Um, and thirdly, but not least, of course, Jason, Jason Finau, who's the president of Taurida Pacifica, the current president. Um, I also have with me um, from the ministry who have been very involved in the work in New Zealand, um, supporting the work in New Zealand, Julie Keenan and Lauren Bell, who are tertiary educate, part of the tertiary education policy group. And it's very exciting for me to be talking here and to also to be joined by all these people. It's wonderful. Um, I, be I became involved in um, the work when I came back to New Zealand, largely through my contacts with New Zealand students who had been to various Student Voice Australia events and through Sheila Mattia, the AQA director, who um, had been over to our events. And it has been great for me to become involved as part of the team in moving forward to actualize, to, to establish the principles and actualize student voice to partnership in New Zealand. Um, there has been, I have to say, a lot of work going on in New Zealand over the years, so it, it didn't come, it hasn't come as a new idea, but the push with the ministry supporting and the students doing a huge amount of work, the mahi by the students has been fantastic, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But first of all, I'm going to ask um, our students, I don't know who would like to go first, their, the understanding of their of student voice to partnership from the perspective of their particular cohorts that they represent. So first of all, first of all, Andrew, where has Andrew gone? Uh, I'm, I'm here, of course, my colleagues um, threw me in first. So kia ora koutou katoa, <laughs> um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm Andrew Lascelles. Um, as Sally said, I'm the, national president, I'm the national president of the New Zealand Union Student Association um, and am uh, from the polytech sector or the vocational education and training sector originally. Um, so I'm the second ever president in NZUSA to come from that sector. Um, so 
for me, student partnership is about students not merely being a token voice in a room, not merely being that one voice on an academic committee, on a panel, on a board, but actually being involved and included in every decision that is made by an institute, not merely a voice that says something very articulate, says something that really connects with students and then gets ignored by the other nine voices in the room. To me, student partnership is, is learners actually being engaged in every step of their tertiary education journey, from, you know, from their education to their campuses, to their lives, to their accommodation, students actively being engaged with in means that are accessible and inclusive and students actually having, having a voice that is respected, that is listened to, that is held with sort of equal mana to the voice of the institution. So students making up half of committees if that is the right place for them to be. Students actively having a voice in everything that a tertiary institution does and students having a right to co-design what their institutions do as well. Students being recognized as the reason tertiary education exists, not as, um, not as entities to be treated as a sort of passive object. So for me, student partnership is really just recognizing the inherent rights and responsibilities that students have and the fact that they should be playing an active role in everything that happens in the tertiary education sector. Thank you, Andrew. That's, um, that's great. Alice, do you have, sure. what would you um, like to add to that? Kia ora, everyone. Uh, yes, as Sally said, I'm Alice. I'm the um, president of the National Disabled Students Association. Um, we define disabled as um, an interaction between a person's impairment and particular social barriers that they may come up against. Um, so we include physical disability, learning disabilities, neurodiversity, mental illness, chronic illness, and basically all the umbrella that includes disability. Um, yeah, so I guess partnership student from student voice to student partnership for me is really about um, facilitating equitable participation. So I think a lot of the time, you know, students kind of ask their opinion or there's this notion of consultation. But for a lot of students, particularly students with different disabilities, um, the ways in which that is done is extremely inaccessible. So, you know, there's 100 page documents um, or meetings that are just inaccessible in themselves. Um, so I think meaningful partnership is really about taking away any barriers that individuals may face when it comes to actual participation. Um, so, yeah, that to me is what partnership is about. Um, it's also about nothing about us without us, which is particularly passionate for the disabled community. Um, so a lot of the time, we're not actually the ones who speak up about our own needs and we're trying to shift that so people actually ask the disabled students what they want as opposed to staff. Um, so that's really important about all decisions that impact us are made with our partnership and our consultation. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. Thanks, Alice. And Jason. Um, Kia ora, ma loni, tam falava. Uh, greetings. I'm Jason, the president for Tauri Pacifica, which is the National Pacific Students, or oh, Tertiary Association for Pacific Students. Um, so for me, in terms of student voice and student partnership, really what it's about, and this is coming from a Pacific perspective, um, really just understanding on a base level, I just want to, you know, at the, at the roots of it, understanding what students are. And if everyone comes into a situation where, you know, you've got um, the institution as well as people making sure that everyone has a full understanding of the whole person, not just, you know, the circumstances of what, what's happening at university, but actually understanding um, their background, their culture, everything that they bring with them, because it can be their family, their village, the church, their communities, it, that's about, that. that's really what student voices um, and partnership means to me is having everyone in the room, um, understanding fully what they're supposed to do and giving effect to what we call here in New Zealand learners at the centre. So giving effect to that statement in our tertiary education strategy by the Ministry of Education, uh, actually allowing students to be their whole selves um, in, any, in any place that they're in. So yeah, that's, I think everyone's sort of covered most of it, so. Not much. Great. Thank you, Jason. Um, that was a great, a great start. So first of all, what I was really going to talk about today or lead the talk on is hearing their voices in the sector, which is our first second slide, which I think is about to come up. Um, what has been happening here? First of all, I was first alerted to what was going on in New Zealand when I was looking at international um, 
international moves for student voice and student partnership as part of my, first of all, the project that preceded my fellowship. And I discovered that there had been in 2013, um, it's a, a report, Student Voice and Tertiary Education Settings, Quality Systems in Practice, which was prepared for ACO Aotearoa, which is the National Centre for Tertiary Teaching Excellence, and the New Zealand Union of Students Associations. So I started with that. What's happening now is that there were more, um, more moves to, in policy towards including or emphasising um, the goal of learners as partners in um, te tato ana mata of Ako Aotearoa, which is strategic goals for evaluating learners as partners, their voice, voices, experience and aspirations, and the Academic Quality Agency for New Zealand Universities and their enhancement themes are taking a more partnership approach. And now, and now um, there is underway um, draft legislation, education, pastoral care of tertiary and international students, code of practice, um, outcome two very clearly states, emphasizes learner voice, hearing, heeding, and embedding learners' voices in relevant education provision, decision-making, and governance. So that's the background really to the work that was done by the students at the end of last year, supported by the ministry in what is now known as Fria Nadal, um, student voice to partnerships and the Mahi was driven by student leaders and supported by the um, Ministry of Education and it was for me that was the point that I became um, involved I was asked to be part of the team um, and it was a fantastic experience for me to work with all the great students from student leaders from across New Zealand from different areas of different cohorts different student organizations in New Zealand. And um, it was, as I said, a great experience. And this is, I'm just gonna quickly run through it because um, I can make it available, but also the rest of the slides show how it was set up. So we have had a, had a Kiki, which is a, I have to say as a New Zealander, I really, I'm, I'm learning today. <laughs> I've discovered that in the 13 years that I was in Australia, there has been a huge movement towards today or the Māori language being spoken everywhere. And um, I'm really um, struggling to catch up. So um, I'm hoping that my students and ministry people will put me right on pronunciation <laughs> if I get it wrong. Okay, so the Harikiki, which is the picture in front of you, is a flax bush with the idea oh, right. of the roots and then the, the growth coming up. And there is four... Um, the Harikiki model of student provider partnerships has four bases. Bases. If could you move on? To I the... think yeah, the screens and sharing probably so they're gonna do it on their end. But yeah, they seem to be sharing it. So okay. Just look at that. So the idea of the um, just to go back a step, the idea of the mahi that led to the Fidia Narao was um, for. Um, as a, I think to be presented as a gift to the to the sector, to for students to really work through what was important to them and their student voice to partnership, and it has it has as well as the principles that are set out the four the four principles and then what goes underneath them as you'll see on the powerpoints as we go through, but also within the Fidia are sections making it real and progressing partnership stories from students, from Toyota students, um, which is not just about something that's aspirational, but of course it is aspirational, but also that it has a means towards actualization in the, in the sector. And that is, um, that's what's moving forward now. But just to go back a step, so we have, um, the first one, which Lauren is now going to put up. You yeah, can't. On there end, oh, you're doing it. The, you're in. So okay. Yeah, next slide. Um, progressing from student voice to strong partnerships. The first one is, who would like to pronounce that for me? So, one are, one no, no. Oh, no, 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 sorry, that's the second one. Fano. Sorry. Yeah. Building connections with each other. 
Um, and you'll see on the um, on the slide which you have, which is the sorry, I've moved on to the second slide, haven't I? The first, yeah, the first slide is Faka Fakari strengthening student voices. And if you have a look at that slide, you will see um, the points under that, which are developing approaches yeah, to fit their go. learning environment, making plans, office requests to support the student voice, etc. If we then move on to the next one, it is um, building connections with each other, engaging way in ways that honor to Treaty of Waitangi, which is the Treaty of Waitangi, which is a huge, um, the core of everything that we do in New Zealand. Um, engaging in ways that honour the treaty um, and students are respected and values as experts as being students, connections are mutually beneficial, etc. I won't read through them because you will have these slides made available to you. Is that right, Carmen? Yeah. Um, the next one is Akaranga, learning with and from each other. And the fourth one is Mahi Tahi, working together, which is important, which is to me a hugely important point to get to as we work through all of these different, the different principles. Um, Taura, students and providers developing ideas and solutions together. I mean, the old view, the view that we came from way back then was um, that the universities or the providers develop the views and then they ask students. And I think the whole, the, the approach now in Australia and here and in Scotland and in Ireland and everything is now working together from the beginning. And I think this really emphasizes that. So the um, that's a really brief, summary the um I don't think we're quite at the end you know because we've got to get the students to... <laughs> that's that's the video and really brief summary and now um we're going we're moving forward on that it's not a directive but the idea is it's to be used by providers and students to progress the conversation so I'm now going to ask the students um the students with me again how do you see working in partnership with your institutions and sector bodies benefits you and the sector? Who would like to go first? Alice. Sure. Um, so I think we all know that there's a lot of inequities in the tertiary space um, for disabled students, for the New Zealand Maori students and Pacifica students. I think that student voice is key to meeting a lot of these issues. I know that when I speak to disabled students, a lot of the issues that we commonly think are an issue about funding or these huge issues we don't know what to do with, students have a really simple solution because they know what works for them. And I think that is what um, we can get out of something like Fidiangado is that providers can really serve students um, and get to that step before all these barriers happen and before um, we reach to a place of crisis where a relationship is completely broken down. So yeah, I think it's um, crucial both on providers and student, just in terms of student success and their entire experience at education. That's really good. Thank you, Alice. It's also good that you, I was going to ask the next question, but I can see we're going to run out of time. So if you could include, as, as Alice did, how you see Fria Naro working from from here on with your providers and your particular areas and I think that you sort of, you touched on that which was great um should we leave Andrew to last Jason cool. <laughs> um so from Toyota Pacific for, from a Pacific perspective because we're in this sort of um precarious position where we are a minority but we're not part of um you know, we, we sort of, yeah, we, we always get lumped with um, our Māori counterparts, and I do want to acknowledge that we're, um, that, that Te Mana Akua National Māori Students Association did on Whiria Ngaro as well. Um, we're not um, treaty partners, so we all, we're always in this position of how do we best sort of give effect to student voices, student partnership, and so for us, it's really advocating on a level that works. So one of the um, 
one of the four pillars of, um, I guess, of Filia Ngaro and what I referenced to um, earlier is um, Akuranga, learning with and from each other. Mm. So it's sort of just using a lot, you know, alongside um, our partner organisations of the National Disabled Students and New Zealand Union um, Students Association, um, Akuranga, just sort of almost when I talk about sort of like shared inheritance. So just um, coming into a space as students, but also understanding that we each walk different paths and making sure that we all understand each other so we can empower each other as well, because that's really what we try to do in Student Voice here in New Zealand is really empower students um, and student organisations to be able to partner with their universities, because it's actually using, if you think about Akuranga learning with and from each other, learning from instances where, say, something happened in Auckland that can be used somewhere down here in Wellington or somewhere in Christchurch. So it's making sure that we actually all work together to support um, you know, because students shouldn't work in silos, we should always be working together to advance the needs of students, because that really will give effect to learners at the centre, which we love to say in New Zealand, because that's where we're heading apparently. No, no, we are, yeah. So, yeah, giving effect to that, but yeah, that's right. Thank you, Jason. Andrew? Yeah, I think I think for me, one of the reasons um, when we were developing Firianaro, one of the reasons that we did um, adopt the Harakeke model of sort of the flax leaves blowing out and, and learners being at the center was because it was quite a good visualization from Te Ao Māori. It was quite a good visu visualization of how we want learners to be treated in the sector and how partnership does actually help institutions and students. Because if you put learners at the center of their education, if you make the education system work around learners as partners rather than, rather than students having to work around a tertiary system that simply doesn't meet their needs, simply doesn't identify or help them with those needs. Um, if you actually build the system with students at the centre and everything supporting them around them, um, you know, looking after students, making sure their voices are being heard, that's the only way you actually achieve equitable outcomes for students. That's the only way you can reduce and eliminate barriers. And that is why we chose that Harakeke model of students being at the centre, of actually trying to figure out how we can put students at the centre, but also ensure that there is support there. And for me, that's, that's what partnership and institutions will look like, is students will be able to work with their institutions to identify their needs, you know, to identify solutions because students are the expert at being students. No one can take that away from them. No one can deny them that right. And for me, that is a game changer. If we actually get our systems from the ground up to recognize that every single step through a learner's journey in the, in the education system, from the moment they think about going to university or polytechnic to when they're in the study to when they're going out and getting careers if they are at the center of every part of that process and engaged in inclusive and equitable, equitable ways to hear their voice to share their voice and to empower their voice we get a better education outcome for everyone who goes through the system and i think the next steps for me the most exciting next step we're having in aotearoa is the creation of tipuka which is the new um, national polytechnic that is being created in new zealand for vocational education and training it is merging 16 different regional polytechnics into one national network of provision, which is going to have 200,000 learners across the system and is going to be the 35th biggest tertiary institution in the world. And in this, the ministry of, uh, in this um, creation of Tepukinga, there's been a recognition that the current system doesn't work for students. The current system doesn't meet their needs. The current system simply is inequitable, unjust, and full of barriers that shouldn't be there. Um, and Tipukinga have committed to learners at the centre. And I think if we adopt Firianaro as the document throughout all of Tipukinga that does guide the creation of this new institute from the ground up, and we actually embed learners at the centre of it, we will have um, a tertiary education system that will, quite frankly, could possibly be the best in the world. If we can have a system that truly works around learners and works with learners, recognises the diversity of the challenges in their lives that they experience, and actually equitably upholds the mana of those students and really empowers them in everything they do. I think that could be a, a game changer, not just for Aotearoa, but for the entire world. And I think for me, that is the fantastic thing that we've got with Fidi and is we have this opportunity, this guiding document to help frame what partnership looks like in New Zealand. We start with the polytechnics, we then look at how the universities can be involved in this process and that universities are adopting this framework as well. And then going forward, we can look at how we can help that, how we can grow that, not just in New Zealand, but outside perhaps even as well. Thank you, Andrew. So you really touched on it. So where to from here? It's interesting that there is now, the word is out in the sector much more, the, the sector agencies 
have become much more engaged with um, with the work from Fidia. Um, it, there's now really the need for a national conversation, which we're hopefully moving out into. But there's a lot of there's a lot of work going on in different. Um, Andrew's talked about Tupukinga, tupu but there is. I'm aware of um, a lot of work going on at Victoria University to um, develop principles for their use for student voice to partnership within the university, within decision making and governance at that university. Massey University is now, I think they've declared themselves as, that they want to be the leader in student voice <laughs> in New Zealand. Um, and they have appointed, um, they have appointed staff to move this forward. Um, University of Canterbury now has a student partnership agreement, which I think is the first in New Zealand. So there is the, the starting with starting with the the, the buzz before FIDIA, but then the work that's gone into FIDIA and the and the students, um, the amazing understanding of the students and the um, the motivation that they have to move this forward has been fantastic. And I think that that kind of buzz is going out into the sector and um, watch the space, really. I'm just aware of time. Do we have to, are we, I was going to ask the students to have a last word, but how are we going for time, Kami? Yeah, you're doing, you're doing great. So you've got a couple more minutes. A couple more minutes. Yeah. I, I might have to leave Andrew off if we've only got a couple more minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll give you, oh, how, does I, how does five? Can we the last word? Um, would, so the next, the next thing is, as I said, the buzz out in the sector, getting the conversation going. The most important thing is, as, as everybody knows from what the work that was done in Australia, is to reach a common understanding in the sector of what we're talking about when we talk about student voice to partnership because as, and student engagement. And Ocean talked a lot about this as well, that progression from student voice that a lot of institutions would say, we have student voice, we have feedback and we have consultation. But my answer to that has always been, well, what do you do with that? Then the next thing is, is to student engagement, as Ocean said, and then student partnership. And I think that it is a progression that we're moving, that we're moving through. And I think that FIDIA has given a great basis for that. The idea is with the stories at the end, making the making it real section and progressing partnership stories where the students gave their talked about their experiences in their different um, institutions of um, working in partnership or or trying to and reflecting on what went what worked well and what didn't, what went wrong, is a hugely important step within the, within FIDIA. And the idea is that progressive, the plan is to work with progressive students and student leaders to add to that, to make it, to make it real, to actualize it rather than just having it as aspirational. Okay, one quick comment from my wonderful student team here. Um, I guess, no, I think yeah, there's just real excitement just to see how this progresses into and how it sort of, you know, permeates through our tertiary education system here because we're going through some big changes. So I guess, yeah, just really looking out for um, how those changes can really give effect to learners at the centre. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess mine would just be that it's good to be in the room and at the table and um, I'd really hope to see that um, my friends across the ditch are also able to kind of get disabled student voice up and running because mm -hmm. we are um, an underserved population group here in the tertiary sector and it's our time to shine, I think. It's great, Alice. Great. Yeah. Alice has done an amazing job getting the association up and running here. So the challenge is out there, anyone who's listening in Australia, to do the same. Um, Andrew. Yeah, I think, um, as you can probably tell, I'm incredibly excited by the opportunity we have with Fidianado to really embed student partnership and everything tertiary institutions do. As I said, we've got a fantastic opportunity with Tepukinga to build um, a network of education that has student um, student. Um, partnership embedded from the ground up. We also have a fantastic opportunity to see how our other institutions that already exist 
can change to better embed this. But I think the only reason we're at this point and the only reason we have the Leonardo in the state it is and the only reason we are getting it adopted by the sector and really listened to is because when we went through this process, we tried our utmost to empower and include every student voice there is in the room, not just have choking students. So for me, the, the real takeaway from here is the way we embed and create student partnership is by engaging with student partnership when we're designing frameworks like this, making sure that we have in the New Zealand context, making sure we have national student voice, making sure we have Maori student voice, Pacifica student voice, disabled student voice, student voices from the institutions like Polytex that often go unheard, um, international students embedded throughout that. And that for me, that is, that is partnership, is being inclusive with the voices that we hear from and hearing from as many as possible. I can see Mamaroa there. I was just going to um, say the reason why we don't have representation from a Māori student here is because she is in the next session, which is um, which is great. So we look forward to listening to her. Thank you so much. Ka kite anau. Thank you for listening. Um, it's been great to be able to share the New Zealand experience with Australia from the side of the Tasman, for me especially. It's, but it's very um, quite moving, but thank you for having us. And thank, thank you, you to my students for their wonderful words. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you very much, guys, for joining us. Um, so, yeah, thanks to Sally, Andrew, Alice, Jason, um, and Judy and Lauren there as well. So thanks for coming along. Uh, just a, a quick um, comment from um, one of our attendees uh, said how much they love that FLAX model um, and that students are the expert at being students. So therefore that centric um, aspect of how you build that up and that's actually where diversity comes from, ensuring that there's that diverse um, voice being heard. And I'm really looking forward to what you guys are going uh, moving forward. You got some big steps going forward, so it's great. I'm gonna... Thank you.